Yes, Governor Anyang Nyongo, live from Kisumu, from 7 a.m. on Good Morning Kenya, only on KBC Channel One. It's the third round of the DFB Pool Cup, a mini Revere Derby in the DFB Cup. You see the big is an old school raw pot battle five time winners against two time finalists fantastic save from Gregor Kobel the raw pot battle only one can go through Unclaimed financial assets include bank accounts, insurance policies, and other financial assets belonging to people just like you. Don't let your assets remain unclaimed. Take a few minutes to check and see if you have any unclaimed financial assets. She is giving me drama for my traumas. Twice the love and devotion. good things you do, they make me know. Visit www.ufaa.go.ke, dial star 361 hash, or visit Huduma Center near you. Labdo Miomoka na ujui, the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority. Receive, safeguard, reunite. To get the pit as your skis are tuned, dial star 811 star 397 hash. You may be in the pit. You do not see how you could get out. But the good news is that you do not have to get by yourself. The Most High God is about to lift you out. He's about to turn the medical report. He's about to free you. He's about to open new doors, bringing new opportunities, new relationships. The pit is not your destination. Get ready to rise. To get the pit, dial star 811 star 397 hash. Star 811 star 397 hash. Where is your boyfriend? You were sick. Yo, man, boy child, be very careful. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm the Grammy acclaimed artist took the stage to a revved up crowd who sang along as he performed hits from his album Savage Level and caught the feels when he performed a film My Love from Saudi Soul's Midnight Train album. <laughs> The event will feature music groups from North, South, East, West and Central Africa, all performing 100% live music. Oxlade, the Kulosa hit maker. Now let me remember you. around the world. The news begins right now with our top stories. Not 
so sober, Judge Said Chitembwe found guilty of misconduct as tribunal hands over report to President Ruto recommending his removal from office. The game of musical chairs. President Ruto meets Nyanza leaders at State House while ODM cries foul over attempts to lure its members. Sisi kama serikali tutajaribu kutuweza kuwatumia majani cha uh, kahawa pamoja pia na uh, njugu karanga na zingine ambazo naweza zitumia vitu ambazo zinaweza kwenda kwa upesi sana na kutumiwa kwa upesi bila kuharibika plus standing with Turkey and Syria Kenya pledges to send in aid following a devastating earthquake that has claimed the lives of more than 5000 people There you are, socials at KBC Channel 1, my Twitter handle at Tomboya24. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. My name is Tomboya, our sign language interpreter is Susan Thuku. Embattled High Court Judge Justice Juma Said Chitembwe now only has 10 days to appeal against his removal from office after a tribunal formed to investigate his conduct found him guilty. The tribunal appointed by former President Uhuru Kenyatta has handed over a report to President William Ruto recommending his removal from office. President Ruto said in a statement that the findings of the tribunal are binding and that he will wait for the appeal timelines to lapse before taking the necessary presidential directives. Member Tribunal led by Justice Mumbingogi, appointed by former President Uhuru Kenyatta on the 18th of May 2022, following a petition by the Judicial Service Commission for the removal of High Court Judge Said Chitembwe, has submitted a report to President William Ruto recommending his removal. The tribunal was unanimous in its report and recommended that the High Court judge be relieved of his responsibilities. In the recommendations by the tribunal found the judge in breach of the code of conduct prescribed for judges of superior courts and gross misconduct or misbehavior contrary to Article 168, sub Article 1B and E of the Constitution, respectively. This is a matter that I do not have any other recourse. And uh, I don't believe that if a matter like this comes to my office and I have no choice but to do what the law says, that does not make me any less. I think it's just the way things are supposed to be. Recommending the Justice side Juma Chitembwe be removed as judge of the High Court of Kenya. Justice Sain Chitembwe now has up to 10 days to file an appeal pursuant to Article 168 sub Article 8 as read with Article 168 sub Article 9 of the Constitution and upon the lapse of the timelines the head of state is required to take appropriate presidential action. We have issues with anybody in whatever office, we just need to follow the law, we just need to stick to the constitution, and we can sort out whatever issues that we have with uh, whatever public officer. This is yet another step as a country that we are building on the firm foundation of the rule of law, uh, sticking to the dictates of uh, what our constitution and the law provides in dealing with whatever uh, issues that arise in our society. Chitimbo is the eighth judge to face a tribunal of allegations of misconduct since the 2010 constitution was adopted. Serafina Roby for Prime Edition. President William Ruto has welcomed World Bank's move to support the Hustler Fund in cushioning the vulnerable in Kenya. President Ruto held a meeting at Status with a delegation from the World Bank led by Regional Vice President for Eastern and Southern Africa, Victor Kwakwa, at State House. He said the technical assistance from the World Bank will go a long way in uh, making the Hustler Fund uh, more inclusive as well as transformative to millions of ordinary Kenyans. On her part, Kwakwa acknowledged the World Bank's work in progress climate resilience agenda that is based on the current drought.
Meanwhile, President William Ruto has called on uh, all leaders to join hands, foster coexistence and work together in confronting the challenges that are facing the country. Speaking on Tuesday at State House Nairobi, when he held a meeting with a section of members from Nyanza, President Ruto said that he will work with leaders from across the political divide for the sake of the country's unity and also economic transformation. After touring the Nyanza region, President William Ruto has held a meeting with a section of area leaders at State House Nairobi. The lawmakers, drawn from the Orange Democratic Movement Party, pledged to work with the president to foster development in the region. Following the meeting, the head of state said the government would serve all Kenyans equally, irrespective of their political persuasion. But the Orange Democratic Movement has downplayed Tuesday's meeting, taking to social media to claim that it was an attempt to dangle carrots and dish handouts to its elected leaders. The Orange Party and by extension Azimio alleged that it was denied victory in August 2022. The Nyanza leaders who attended Tuesday's meeting include Gideon Ochanda of Bondo, Elisha Odhiambo of Gem, Mark Nyamita of Uriri, Karoli Omondi of Suba South, Shakil Shabir of Kisumu East, Independent Felix Odwar, Elias Jalango of Langata, Paul Abor of Rongo, John Owino of Awendo, and Kisumu Senator Professor Tom Ojenda. Well, let's now um, uh, look at education. Uh, there's a boy from Narok County who sat for the 2022 Kenya Certificate of Primary Education exam. He may fail to join Form 1, and uh, the reason is lack of school fees. Ifraim Kamauchio Nyambura scored 384 marks, emerging as the best student in his school. But his dream to join Kagumo High School, that is domiciled in Nyeri County, hangs in the balance. This comes as various schools across the country report overwhelming turnout as Form 1 admission enters day two. Let's listen into that report. Ephraim Kamuicho's ability to join Kagumo High School may be in the hands of a good Samaritan. Having emerged the best student with 384 marks at his school, Ior and Tepesi Primary in Narrow County, in last year's KCPE, he lacks school fees to proceed with his education. My mom is not able to pay all my fees. So um, just come to me some well wishes to support me. Sifanyangi kazi, nakaa na mamangu, ambaye ni mgonjwa. Na siyezi ye dabali, sababu kuna ndawa anatumianga, siyezi ya fodi yu school fees ya kagumo. Ephraim is a very bright boy. Once he gets a well wisher to support him through his schooling, he is a very brainy person. And I have a lot of belief in him. And as Ephraim hopes for well wishers to come to his aid, the management of Tenwek High School in Bomet County has called on parents to ensure all learners selected to join the school turn up, regardless of financial status. Tunaelewa hali ilivyo, uchumi ni mbaya, wakati mwingine ukimwambia mwanafunzi arudi nyumbani mwanafunzi huyu anaweza kuishi kule milele. Kwa hivyo njia pekee ya kuhakikisha kwamba hawa wanafunzi ni kwa wasajili ili waweze kuanza kusoma. Chief Principal Mutali Chesebe says the school is committed to assist a few needy students to enable them proceed with learning. Meanwhile, various schools within Kisi County, such as Amaboko Secondary School and Moi High School, Gesusu, are reporting overwhelming numbers of learners joining the schools. Uh, but we have so many total orphans that have just reported amongst uh, the ones that are continuing from 1, 2, and 3, uh, sorry, from 2, 3, uh, uh, from 2, 3, and 4. Actually, we have some that uh, we are hosting the school freely without paying the school fee because they cannot manage totally. So I've accommodated them so that they can get their free uh, meals in school, go to discuss and, and learn. We may need to expand uh, facilities like library that will be very critical as the number is increasing. Our school has an, an enrollment of 2,400 students. Eh? 
That means that we need to expand our facilities. Kitu ni maona kwa hii shule, serikali yetu ituongezee pesa, machengo ikue vizuri, rangi ipakwe vizuri, hata tukiingia ndani tunaona watoto wetu wako mahali pazuri. And in Matunguka Kamega County, a section of students from vulnerable backgrounds have benefited from the Constituency Development Fund as the leadership aims at achieving the 100% transition. Now the national government administrators have been called upon to be at the forefront for the fight against crime across the country. Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindiki says that officers will, be, will, will have specific crime reduction goals set for them. The CSA says that there will be rewards for those who perform well to boost their morale. Nancy Okware is on the security beat. Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindiki was in Nyandarua County for the official opening of the Deputy County Commissioner Office in Kipipiri. It is here that the CS called on all administrators at all levels of government to be at the forefront in the reduction of crime in their areas of jurisdiction. Kindiki noted that in order to meet the set targets, there will be a reward system for those who have performed well. We want to work towards reduction of crime statistics and therefore we will make sure that the assistant chief, the chief, the ACC, the DCC, the county commissioner who achieves better results in crime prevention and reducing the crime statistics, we will have a reward system of making sure that we give, boost their morale even as we look at their uh, uh, promotions and other things. But at the same time, the officers where in your area crime is increasing. We will also have a way of telling you that you are not doing a good job. The CS raising concern over the increase in illicit brew business in the central region, urging the county governments to join forces to deal with the menace. To metangaza vita, vidi ya wale ambao wanauzia, wanauzia watoto wetu pombe ambayo iko na sumu na ambayo inatengenezwa huko kando kando ya mito haijawekwa vipimo vya serikali madawa ya kulevya na vitu vingine ambao vimezorotesha jamii na kwari prime edition we'll take you to Turkey, Syria and uh, Kirinyaga plus Kisumu when we come back from this short break in wrong places. Billions in unclaimed cash and other assets are here for you. Unclaimed financial assets include bank accounts, insurance policies and other financial assets belonging to people just like you. Don't let your assets remain unclaimed. Take a few minutes to check and see if you have any unclaimed financial assets. Claiming your assets is easy. Simply visit www.ufaa.go.ke dial star 361 hash or visit Huduma Center near you. Labdo Miomoka na Ujui the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority. Receive, safeguard, reunite. Nini! <laughs> 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 
kushinda milioni mbili kila siku kwenye Mpesa chakua lipa na Mpesa Payment number 757070 Account number andika neno loto kisha weka star na nambari yako ya simu weka kiwango chochote cha pesa kuanzia shilingi ya hamsini hadi elfu mbili Aulali Lipa kisha subiri true Welala Nda kutimizia ndoto zako milioni mbili usiamini Jube huu umeidhinishwa na BCLB. Vijana chapa kazi wenye nguvu za zihada. Mayuvi. Uko na talent ya kusing, spoken word, ku compose jingles ama any other unexploited artistic talent. Gava through Ministry of Information, Communication and the Digital Economy na KBC sasa ume come up na project ya ku promote usanii called Studio Mashinani. These studios are grassroots and they are fitted with high quality state of the art equipment where you can produce quality audio and video music content for free. What's more, one of our mentorship na talanta yako itakuwa promoted on KBC Channel 1 TV, Y254 na radio stations za KBC. Tembelea studio mashinani huko Comarox, Langata, Sauti House Mombasa, Kirwara huko Gatanga, Kitui next to Manyanyoni Chiefs Camp na Kisumu City wako hapo KBC station. Usilalie talent. This is your chance to commercialize and popularize your talent through Studio Mashinani. Commodities Fund is a government agency under the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development mandated to provide low-cost financing to crop sector in Kenya. The fund informs clients, stakeholders and members of the public in general that we have relocated our Nairobi offices from Railways headquarters to Utalii House 11th floor along Utalii Street off Uhuru Highway. As from 1st February 2023, our new postal address is Commodities Fund Utalii House 11th floor, Utalii Street off Uhuru Highway, PO Box 52714, code 002 Nairobi, Kenya. For farms operations, agro-processing, value addition, working capital, access loans at an interest rate as little as 3% per annum. Welcome back to this live broadcast. Let's take you across to Turkey where the situation there remains dire after that 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit the southeastern of the country uh, and Syria killing over 5,000 people. Rescue efforts are being hampered by the way by bad weather with the World Health Organization waiting, warning rather that the death toll could go up. Kenya in the meantime will donate tea, coffee, an assortment of foodstuff as well as medical supply to Turkey even as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs confirmed that no Kenyan, no Kenyan has been reported to have been affected by that deadly earthquake. Following the earthquake that hit the two nations on Monday, the death toll has risen to over 5,000. Over 15,000 people have been injured in the earthquake and more are still trapped in the rubble. The World Health Organization has warned the toll may rise dramatically as rescuers find more victims. Dozens of nations have pledged support for thousands who have been rendered homeless amid the freezing weather which has hampered emergency rescue efforts. Kenya will in the meantime donate tea, coffee, assorted foodstuffs and medical supply to Turkey with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs appealing to Kenyans to come to the aid of the Turkish people. Since kama serikali tujaribu kutuwezo kwa tumia majani cha uh, kahawa pamoja pia na uh, njugu karanga na zingine ambazo naweza zitumia vitu ambazo zinaweza kwenda kwa upesi sana na kutumiwa kwa upesi bila kuharibika na pia kuweza kuwasaidia lakini naomba wa Kenya wote tafadhali tuweze kuchanga pamoja tukienda makanisani Jumapili Jumamosi msikiti tutoe sala tutoe sadaka maalum ya kuweza kuwasaidia ndugu na ndugu zetu wa kule Turkey tuweze kuwa kuambatana nao katika hali ya kutatua shida hizi The Ministry of Foreign Affairs says no Kenyan has been reported affected by the deadly earthquake in what the Turkish ambassador to Kenya Sibute Yuksel describes as a situation where time is of essence. We are in touch with the mission our mission in uh, Turkey and uh, for any updates on what is going on I like to report that no Kenyan has so far been affected by the earthquakes and uh, we have we are keeping tabs to know whether any Kenyan has been affected, but so far we've not had any Kenyan affected. And also to say that uh, we have also put together a hotline 
a distress line so that any person, any Kenyan who is in these countries who is facing distress has been affected by the earthquake can call the following number and that is 905-385-020-960. What happens in Turkey is not only an intense earthquake but also a very unusual disaster as to its extent. It hit several cities and a big number of other settlements. Turkish government promptly mobilized every resources and means to in intervene, as did the Turkish people. Search and rescue efforts continue, but time is of essence. John Jacob Curia, Prime Edition. Civil society organizations in Kisumu County have come together to form the Kisumu County Development Trust. That's an umbrella that seeks to consolidate the working mechanisms of the organizations with a view to sparring development in that county. As Weekly for Kechi reports, the trust, which is also supported by the United States Agency for International Development, you said, will also work to enhance accountability and transparency in the operations of member organizations. Resource mobilization for development is one of the fundamental goals of civil society organizations. But it was very unfortunate. However, mobilizing resources can sometimes be a hard nut to crack for small organizations with limited scope. But here, yeah, the civil society. It is for this reason that Kisumu based civil society organizations have come together under the Kisumu County Development Trust in a move to harmonize operations of member organizations. Grassroots organizations need resources to develop uh, their communities so that they can create better impact and not leaving anyone behind. And we also know that they need capacity building because this is one of the ways that uh, really can help to sustain organizations so that they are able to uh, continue in the development agenda. So the KCDT as it is, is uh, bringing in some strength in terms of how communities can uh, participate in policy development and also in terms of policy uh, implementation. The consolidation is also geared towards enhancing accountability and transparency in development operations. And in our membership we have uh, organizations that are specifically doing particular issues. They could be in water, they could be in, in uh, uh, agriculture, livelihood, they could. So we have mapped uh, our members in all these sectors so that whenever there is a resource, there is any uh, capacity building, then we know who does what. You know, when you have a, a, an umbrella body, then donors begin to take you seriously. When you have an umbrella body, then you have, um, you know, a set of um, ways to operate so that uh, in the event that one is funded, in the event that one is in a particular you know, uh, space, then you do it in a better way. At least 217 civil society organizations have enlisted with the consortium, all in a bid to spur development in various critical areas in the county, among them agriculture, water and education. For a prime edition, I am Wycliffe Okage. At the height of insecurity along Djibouti's Indian Ocean coastline in the mid-2000, Kenya dispatched a military contingent to Djibouti in an effort to make the entire coastal inaccessible to the pirates. Colonel retired Dennis Gichangi Ndongo was part of this mission and he narrates his experience in tonight's episode of Military Tales with our own Nisi Imano. The eldest in a family of 12, Dennis Kishangindongo, was born in 1958 in Kirinyaga County. Livelihood was working around tea farms and, uh, you know, looking after cattle. After primary school, Ndongo joined Mangu High School in 1975 to pursue his dream of becoming an engineer. Scored well, but didn't, didn't opt not to go to the university uh, because uh, the, what I wanted to pursue, engineering, uh, had fallen short by one grade. A golden opportunity presented itself shortly after, and Dongo did not hesitate to take it. And then my uncle uh, had an announcement that the Air Force uh, is recruiting tomorrow, and I went. 
were accommodated there doing interviews day and night. On the 25th of May 1977, Dennis Kishangi Ndongo was recruited to the Kenya Air Force and was taken for cadet training. I never even had opportunity to tell my uncle that I had, uh, I had gone. There were no telephones or anything, so we just were just loaded uh, in, uh, into a truck and off to Nakuru. Once back to base in Isli, Ndongo went into administration and human resource training. I was in administration, which involved other many areas, security, uh, pay reviews, and such other things that were important in maintaining personnel, maintaining soldiers in the, uh, in the armed forces. Colonel Ndongo was then sent to Congo for his first peacekeeping mission. Uh, so our job mainly was to establish contact with the rebels and establish uh, rapport with them in order to, you know, to engage them and uh, lead them to laying down their arms, getting down to the negotiating table. Unfortunately, the war in Congo rages on decades later. The objective has still not been met. Conflict can be that long, that painful. Uh, yes, because there's a lot of years lost. Between 2008 and 2009, Kanon Dongo went to Djibouti at the early stages of Kenya's involvement in international peacekeeping missions. That was a time piracy was at its highest at the Indian Ocean. Eh? Piracy was uh, an issue, global issue. Pirates on the international waters captured ships and extorted many by demanding ransoms. So that became a global issue because of trade routes were, had been cut off. This was mainly due to fallout in Somalia because the government had collapsed. So there was uh, anarchy. With piracy came terrorism. So and one of the nerve centers of terrorism became Somalia. Global forces, you know, came up with Djibouti to Djibouti to be their center of operations to check piracy and to check uh, to counter terrorism. This mission was to be his final mission in the Air Force. Another very good experience working with multilateral uh, institutions, global engagement with all countries, Chinese, Europeans, Americans, Africans, so on. Very interesting uh, experiences. What does the colonel take from his time in the military? There are many, many things, but when you ask for one, one would be the resilience, yes. the, the will to continue doing things until, until uh, never to give up. Colonel retired Dennis Kishangi Ndongo left the Kenya Air Force in the year 2012 after 34 years of military service. For Prime Edition, I'm Nisi Imano. the third round of the DFB Book Cup. A mini Revere Derby in the DFB Cup. You see for Mukoko! Lozier's in there and scores! This is an old school raw pot battle. Five time winners against two time finalists. Fantastic save from Gregor Kobel. The raw pot battle, only one could go through. Vijana chapa kazi wenye nguvu za zihada Mayuvi Ukuna talent ya kusingi Spoken word Kukompose jingles Ama any other unexploited artistic talent Gava Through Ministry of Information, Communication and the Digital Economy Na KBC Sasa ome come up na project ya kupromotu sani Called Studio Machinani in studios called Grassroot and they are fitted with high quality state of the art equipment where you can produce quality audio and video music content for free. What's more, one of our mentorship na talanta yako itakuwa promoted on KBC Channel 1 TV, Y254 na radio stations za KBC. Tembelea studio mashinani huko Comarox, Langata, Sauti House, Mombasa, Kirwara, huko Gatanga, Kitui, next to Manyanyoni Chiefs Camp na Kisumu City wako hapo KBC Station.
Usilalie talent. This is your chance to commercialize and popularize your talent through Studio Machinani. Now change gears a bit and look at today's business news. My name is Wairi Mujenga. Now members of the public drawn from the Nairobi metropolitan area today tasked the National Treasury to offer assurances that the privatization of, uh, that is earmarked uh, for parastatals, will improve their financial positions. They raised concerns that some investors were only interested in the assets of the parastatals rather and not their long-term well-being. Here is Nduta Mukami with the details. Today was the last day for members of the public to offer their input in the draft privatization bill of 2023. The session in Nairobi attracted members of the public from the metropolitan area and among their concerns was an assurance from the National Treasury that privatization was the solution to challenges faced by some parastatals. It's been specified what is the financial position, what is the recommended method of privatization, what is the estimated cost of doing that, what are the benefits to be gained, and where it touches, for example, on employees affected by that, what needs to be done. In addition, they want the government to expand the pool of investors to as many Kenyans as possible by listing the targeted parastatals on the Nairobi Securities Exchange as opposed to leasing to private investors. Taken into consideration, listing by introduction and the reverse listing, please add more. We are we will appreciate to learn more. They were also concerned that the draft privatization bill of 2023 does not spell out the appointing authority for the privatization review board. The National Treasury is expected to draft a report based on the public input on draft privatization bill of 2023 for submission to the cabinet in two weeks. With the nine days Kenyans had been given to submit their opinions on the current review of the privatization bill drawing to a close today, the government continues to empower and mobilize resources that will ensure a transformational outlook on the country's economic growth. Reporting for Prime Edition, my name is Induta Mokami. Now, media graduates uh, should explore work opportunities online instead of only targeting white-collar jobs. International Association for Women in Radio and Television coordinator Rachel Nakitare says most jobs are now online and journalists should leverage the digital space to, among others, engage in freelancing. Internet users in Kenya increased by 1.6 million between 2021 and 2022 to about 24 million. Out of this, almost 1 million engage in online jobs. We get the required digital skills to be able to get into the job market and take opportunity, take advantage of the opportunities that come with the digital space. Veteran journalists are challenging new entrants in the field to grow their prowess and explore opportunities on the internet since more jobs are going digital. Take advantage of the opportunities that it offers. It is um, where the economy is headed. It's where all the jobs will be. Like even as a journalist, as you're looking around before you get uh, placed in a media house, there are plenty of opportunities that you can take advantage of on the online space. This emerged as Kenya joined the rest of the world in marking the International Safer Internet Day, where speakers recommended cybersecurity training for journalists to equip them with relevant online skills. Use those spaces safely, uh, feel secure in that space. Also, are you uh, taking initiative to protect people because you're only safe as the next person. So if you're not safe, you've put a loophole whereby the next person can be uh, vandalized or hacked. They say the policies in place should be streamlined to protect, among others, women in media who bear the brunt of cyberbullying. Dulma za kijinsi hasa mitandaoni zipo na wanawake wengi wamekuwa wakiripoti kwamba wanapitia dhulma za aina hiyo na wengine hata wanalazimika kujiondoa kabisa kwenye mitandao. And we are yet to see people being prosecuted because of evils that are happening on the internet and even if they're there they're very small margin we need to see more because we know so many things are happening which are negative on the online platform. Hibak Said for Prime Edition.
Now to the infrastructure sector, the recapiting of the road that was affected by the construction of the 27-kilometer Nairobi Expressway is set, to, is set to start next month. Kenya National Highway Authority Director General Kongo Ndongo says the works will involve putting up more footbridges and construction of another Nairobi Expressway exit into the city centre to ease traffic flow. Since the commissioning of the 27 kilometers Nairobi Expressway nine months ago, there has been a hue and cry over the state of the lower deck road, which users believe was not restored to its initial condition after completion of the upper deck toll road. The government now says plans for restoration of the lower deck road are at an advanced stage. There is need for repairs to be undertaken on the old age. And uh, some of them rightfully and squarely belong to the Moja Expressway team. And the repairs have been ongoing in the interim and are just about complete. Restoration works will involve putting up more footbridges to ease a crossing for pedestrians who currently account for a majority of road fatalities in Kenya. We are going to implement some additional facilities including extra footbridges and also strengthening the road that is the old road that we call it. And we expect these contracts in place in about eight weeks to be ongoing so that we can have the road uh, now strengthened, properly marked, you know, the drainage fixed. This emerged during an update on the performance of the Nairobi Expressway. Officials said 10 million motorists have so far used the toll road, translating to 50,000 motorists daily. I've seen a lot of confidence from Kenyans by striking this 10 million uh, mark. So far, about 2.5 billion shillings has been collected as a toll fees by Moja Expressway Company, which will operate the toll road for 27 years before relinquishing it to the government. We strike the mark earlier than we did. Those are discussions that can be taken on board when time comes. But for now, our desire is for this model to succeed. If we can be able to recoup back the investment in less than the 27 or 17 or 15 years that you've just mentioned, the better for us. So out of school and unemployed youth in Mombasa interested in film production are set to benefit from training being offered by the Africa Digital Media Institute. This is after the Africa Digital Media Institute and the Global Opportunity Youth Network signed a two-year partnership to empower young people tap into Africa's multi-billion dollar film and audiovisual industry. A 2021 UNESCO report shows that Africa's film and audiovisual industry has the potential to create more than 20 million jobs and contribute 20 billion US dollars to the continent's GDP. However, the industry is not fully tapped. It currently employs just 5 million people and accounts for 5 billion dollars in the GDP across Africa. In Kenya, a strategic partnership between the Africa Digital Media Institute and the Global Opportunity Youth Network is expected to train and connect the underserved youth drawn from Mombasa County with employment opportunities through the Swahili Port Hub Foundation, a community space that nurtures talent and skills in technology, creatives, arts and heritage. The Africa Digital Media Institute believes that the partnership will skill youth to engage in innovative income generating activities. I believe that training has to be for work. There has You have to start from the opportunities, the work opportunity, the employers, and then work backwards to design a training that is relevant so that when students graduate, there's a very tight fit between their skills and the opportunity that they want to serve. If the future is young people and you're currently having 66 percent of them unemployed. What does that mean for the county itself in terms of growth, in terms of opportunity, in terms of investment? The film trainers challenged Kenyans to be at the forefront of technological developments to remain competitive and have skills that meet the job market expectations. For us to be able to be 
hub where uh, we can be, Mombasa can be recognized as a, as a hub for creatives, a hub for the film industry, uh, a hub for uh, artists. I think the, the partnership is so important to us. The partnership will offer training programs in a variety of courses, including film and TV production, video production, digital journalism, music production, sound engineering and graphic design. Betty Kiptum, Channel 1 News. Infrastructural challenges such as electricity networks, poor road network and inadequate e-charging ports are factors slowing the uptake of electric vehicles. Those in the value chain are calling for tax incentives, including a reduction of import levies on electric vehicles, eight spare parts and batteries. Despite the numerous challenges that have hampered the adoption of electric vehicles in Kenya, local startups and companies are venturing into the business to accelerate their adoption. Basically, they only have to do minor details, which is the lights, the brakes, and then they have two-year warrants. Even though uptake has been slow, Kenya Power insists that the national grid is robust enough to support the transition from fossil fuel-powered vehicles. During OPIC, these, that is late at night, as Madam Rosemary shared, the demand drops to 1,100 megawatts, leaving out sufficient capacity which can be uptaken by e-mobility. Plans are underway to set up 15 e-motorcycle charging and swapping points in Nairobi. To reduce pressure on the national grid, those with electric vehicles are being encouraged to charge them during off-peak period at night. The future is a tech and now electricity might just be the kingpin going forward. I'm Regina Manyara reporting for KBC Channel One. National Environment Management Authority has been faulted for not creating enough public awareness on the right to clean and healthy environment. Envi environmentalists now want NEMA fast track the establishment of the Waste Management Council to help address runaway challenges facing the environment. Environmentalists have emphasized the need for public awareness in the creation of a clean and healthy environment as stipulated in the Sustainable Waste Management Act. We thought that for us to be able to support the aspect of compliance and even enforcement, we must start talking to people about what the law provides, what it talks about, what it expects and how they can be able to play a role in it. But us as the garbage collectors, what we plan to do is to create more awareness, engage our customers as we collect even go to an extent of training them on the segregation and the separation of the waste. The decision of creating the act was informed by the need to create regulations on extended producer responsibility, something that has unfortunately spun out of control, subjecting majority of Kenyans to pollutions. Uh, this bill is coming into play and we will actually urge all Kenyans to start this habit of, of having a clean environment from, from your house. Train your child to know where to throw their garbage. In a rejoinder, the National Environment Management Authority pledged to stand firm on the act going forward and promised to fast track the following recommendations. This time round, this council is going to ensure that the development of such infrastructure is synchronized and people, certain counties are not left behind. We are going to have targets on recovery and recycling. For me, that is great. Upon its full implementation, Kenyans will be able to enjoy the following benefits. Yeah, one of the things that the Act may provide an answer to some of the problems we are facing is the whole aspect of waste segregation. It becomes very difficult for us to go and reuse or recycle that waste. Uh, the other one that I think is critical is obligating the counties to create or facilitate creation of uh, waste recovery facilities. Opicho Chemtai for Prime Edition. Well, that marks the end of business news for tonight, but you can find more stories on our website at uh, kbc.co.ke. My name is Oirimo Jenga. See you tomorrow for more business news. Have a good night.
Mondo Usisa hao kucheza Loto Moto Shinda milioni mbili kila siku Kwenye Mpesa Chakua lipa na Mpesa Table number 757070 Account number Antika Neno Loto Kisha weka star na nambari yako ya simu Weka kiwango chuchote cha pesa Kuansia shilingi ya hamsimi hadi elfu mbili Aulali Lipa Kisha subiri through Welala Nda kutimizia Loto Zako Milioni mbili usiamini Jube huu umeidinishwa na BCLB It's the third round of the DFB Pool Cup. A mini Revere Derby in the DFB Cup. You see for Bukoko! Lozier's in there and scores! This is an old-school raw pot battle. Five-time winners against two-time finalists. Fantastic save from Gregor Kobel. The raw pot battle. Only one can go through. Now look at the day's sports and we begin uh, with the former league champions, the uh, Gorma here uh, will be targeting to register a win when they take on defending champions Tasca Football Club Wednesday in a Football Kenya Federation League match at Kasarani Stadium. Kogalo is second on the log with 27 points from 12 matches while the Brewers are fourth with 25 points. Seven Football Kenya Federation Premier League matches will be on card tomorrow, with the highlight of the day being the match pitting former league champions Gormaia against defending champions Tasca FC. <laughs> Kogalo will be going for maximum points as they target to dislodge Zoya Sugar at the summit of the log, while Tasca will be hoping to put their campaign back on track after a poor run in the recent matches. Ugalo are second on the log with 27 points from 12 matches, while the Brewers are fourth with 25 points. Gormahia defeated Nairobi Stars by solitary goal in their last match, while Jaska were held to a 1-1 draw by Karyobangi Sharks. The players, the staff, everyone's ready to go. Um, it's obviously been a tough run of games recently. Um, we've had a good record. Um, obviously, we've only lost one game this season. Gormahia is a strong team, but you know we are the champion also. So there's nothing to fear and uh, there's nothing special it's about the game fixer in other matches city stars will meet police karibangi sharks play in zoya sugar madara united take on vihiga bullets Ulinzi stars face bidco united bandari fc play kakamega homeboys while sofapaka will square it out with kcb for prime edition i'm Sela onyango the kickoff time for the mighty Kogalo and uh, the Tasca match is 3 p.m. Wednesday. That's tomorrow, East African time. Now, Kasarani Lions lost 31 55 to J. Quat Assassins on day eight of the ongoing Kabaddi League at the Kasarani Indo Gymnasium. The league is being used to select a Kenyan team that will take part in the forthcoming International Kabaddi Championship to be held in March in Bangladesh only. Jaquat thrashed Kasarani Lions 55 that went to bar crucial point in the ongoing Kabaddi League. <laughs> University of Nairobi bagged five points after registering 60-55 victory over Machakos University. In other matches, Githurai Cheetahs thrashed administration police 71-30 to boost their hope of topping the league. The overall win of the month-long tournament which culminates on 28th of this month will be awarded cash prizes and trophies. 
two bottom place side will be relegated while the other two sides will gain promotion to fit in the second leg of the Allied Championship. The league is being used to select national team that will participate in forthcoming international Kabaddi Championship set to be held in March in Bangladesh. King Orimwangi for Channel One Sports. Kenyan golfer Naomi Wafula has received an invite to play at the Amunda German Masters in June of this year. Meanwhile, Africa and Commonwealth 100 meters champion Ferdinand Omanyala says that he's ready to break the national 60 meter record when he lines up at the Monteville meeting tomorrow in France. Naomi was among the five Kenyan amateurs sponsored by Safaricom to a tune of one million shillings in a just concluded magical Kenyan Ladies Open. The invite came as a result of Wafula's stellar performance after making history by becoming the first Kenyan golfer to make a cut in Ladies European Tour held at Vipingo Ridge Baobab course in Kilifi. This tournament, um, it goes back a few years and uh, I can only say, you know, uh, whenever I drive into Vipingo Ridge and I see throughout the year, not during the tournament, I see a lot of, a lot of the caddies and the security staff getting a big smile on their face. That means to me that we're doing the right thing. So it's not only for the professional players, it's for all the team of the Pingo Rich. You're working endlessly to make this happen. Wafula carried four over per 77 in the final round, which included five bogies with only one bogey to finish in 56th place, beating five professionals who also made a cut. This year's Magical Kenya Ladies Open received a significant boost of 26.8 million from Safaricom, with the company also sponsoring four juniors, Jason Tangeri, Kanana Mudomi, Ida Rose and Vivian Otunde who participated in the Pro-Am tournament. Meanwhile, African Commonwealth 100 meter champion Ferdinand Omanyala says he is ready to break the national 60 meter record when he lines up at Modival meeting tomorrow in France. After equaling his national record in 60 meters at Elite Indo Track Miramas meeting in France, Omanyala has set his eyes on lowering the national record. Omanyala clocked 6.6 .6 seconds to finish behind other Caesar from Cote d'Ivoire, who won the first final in 6.5 seconds as Ethan Okan of Turkey second third in 6.68 seconds. Omanyala who set a new 60 meter national record of 6.6 .6 seconds at meeting Metz Moselle at Lela on February 12th last year in France. He won the fourth heat in 6.6 .6 in bronze tour of the Elite. Lazio was held by relegation threatened Hola Vurona to a one-all draw to hamper its hopes of consolidating its place in the top four at the Stadio Bentogodi Stadium. Meanwhile, Alvaro Garcia scored in the 63rd minute to help Rayo Vallecano to beat Ameria 2-0. Cyril Gonge scored his first goal. Verona moved to within four points of safety, while Lazio was hoping to move into third place in the Serie A. Meanwhile, Alvaro Garcia scored in the 63rd minute to help Rayo Vallecano defeat Almeria 2-0. Vallecano opened the scoring with an own goal by Almeria defender Rodrigo in the 54th minute before Garcia sealed all points nine minutes later. Well, that's all we had time for on the day that uh, Kirinyaga County Governor Ann Waiguru said that a government will not relent in the crackdown on liquor outlets that are operating in that county without licenses. On behalf of KBC Prime Edition team, um, including Susan Thuku, who was our sign language interpreter, I want to thank you so much for watching from Broadcasting House. My name is Tom Boyer. Good night and God bless you. Bye-bye.
kupata waibrania kama sikiza tuni yako bonyeza star 811 star 817 hash Yesu Kristo ni yule yule jana leo na hata milele wa Hebrania 13 mstari wa nane. Kupata waibrania bonyeza star 811 star 817 hash star 811 star 817 hash Unclaimed financial assets include bank accounts, insurance policies and other financial assets belonging to people just like you. Don't let your assets remain unclaimed. Take a few minutes to check and see if you have any unclaimed financial assets. Sasa unataka kusiende? Eh nataka sasa kuziende. Ndio ni muoka live. Ndio. Sasa wakati unakuja kutembelewa na watu hospital Eh, na wakakuwekea sumu unakuta kusema ni mimi mimi uliniona hapo nikikuwekea sumu ama madoki wali confirm ni wewe mzagula very good na hizo madoki fine zilikuja hapo mimi mimi niliongea na mtu yeyote wewe we. eh? nani amesema madogi amesema, amesema madoki madokta simply visit www.ufaa.go.ke dial star 361 hash or visit huduma center near you labda umeomoka na ujui The Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority receive safeguard reunite Commodities Fund is a government agency under the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development mandated to provide low cost financing to crop sector in Kenya. The fund informs clients, stakeholders and members of the public in general that we have relocated our Nairobi offices from railway's headquarters to Utalii House 11th floor along Utalii Street off Uhuru Highway. As from 1st February 2023, our new postal address is Commodities Fund Utalii House 11th floor, Utalii Street off Uhuru Highway, PO Box 52714, code 002 Nairobi Kenya for farms operations agro processing value addition working capital access loans at an interest rate as little as 3% per annum Valentine's is coming. Where is your boyfriend? He was sitting Yo, man, you. boy child, be very careful. Lomani <laughs> aje. Sasa hizi naona mademo amechangamka mm. hata ukiwa text hakuna ku take time eh. Mm. Seconds. Hi, hi please. Hi Seconds. very much. Hi. How are you? <laughs> are you okay? Are you alright? Can I Hey man, boy child, cool 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 mm. cool careful. And by the way, pia hakuna mm. kukasirisha watu because utasamehewa 15th. So 17. whatever it is. We will be kwanza. But anywho, I mean, we are officially into the month of love. We got into Woo! the month of love last week. Mm-hmm. and we are still in those vibes of love but let me remind you guys that it is not only a romantic kind of vibe that should be celebrated you should mm-hmm. celebrate the love you have with your friends mm-hmm. for your family mm-hmm. yourself if you don't have someone just get yourself a flower get make yourself a flower yeah. ukwe, you know coerced into getting into a relationship simply because of valentines who mm-hmm. does that mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just a day yo mm-hmm. teacher miss v apa hivi advice taken <laughs> now we are here to bring you nothing but entertainment as is our usual you don't want to touch that dial my name is Vivian Dago you can simply just call me Miss V Jack Muller the party daddy I'm on as Anita Papi you already know what it is baby. and you know what this right here is Grab wine baby <laughs> what you got to do All right tonight we are kicking off the show straight out at Kisumu city the land of the fishermen where Kisumu Great Fest went down once now we had amazing performances from you know DJ Aisha among other DJs and guess which artist headlined this event man let's take it out
from Nakuru and Pika, the Great West Caravan pitch tent over the weekend at the lakeside Kisumu. Revelers gathered at Cafe Olay just to see what was in store for them on the entertainment menu. The night kicked off with a DJ set of Kisumu's finest DJs, DJ Aisha and DJ Davis. Also present on this night and on stage was Tasca next as finalist Kamwana. <laughs> However, the night belonged to the one and only Kenya Kings brand ambassador and star attraction of the night, Savara. Grammy acclaimed artist took the stage to a revved up crowd who sang along as he performed hits from his album Savage Level and caught the feels when he performed a Feel My Love from Saudi Soul's Midnight Train album. <laughs> The Great Fest Cultural Extravaganza offers consumers a cultural blend of great music and food paired with a legendary Kenyan spirit, not forgetting great local talent. As part of the campaign, the brand is partnering with Grammy acclaimed artist Savara Mudigi and intends to work with more artists through the cultural extravaganza that will be taking place in various regions across the country. <laughs> On to what has been going on on them social media streets and let us begin with some baby mama drama. Now Mr. Seed's baby mama came out and was allegedly saying that Mr. Seed has neglected his duties as a dad, that he is not coming through for the kid in whatever way, like he is just not in the kid's life. And the lady, uh, Liz Sonia, was saying that, you know what, I am not even able to cater for this son of mine by myself. He, she she really just wants Mr. Sid to come through because apparently according to her Mr. Sid is doing absolutely nothing not financially not physically like he is just not there I don't have any other words for this I don't have seen him only by the way Mimi my letter to story you guys are familiar with the song Nakupenda we Nakutaka we Kwako Sijiwezi oh my love well if you know that song then you definitely know the artist who sang this particular song and that is tanzania's j melody now j melody uh during an interview with um zazi william tuva mentioned that 
he has been writing songs for some artists and he mentioned that he wrote some songs for Willie Pose as well that is the song Jiwa that we all love by Willie Pose and Nandi and also Hallelujah by Willie Pose and I'm seeing 